so let's continue from last time. This is a uh, class number seventeen. I'm not sure if this is going to be the last class before we we get on to the YouTube completely. Nobody comes here or not because of the COVID. But anyway, you you are watching the YouTube after the class. You 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 always do that, so you get used to this before other classes, uh, other people. Today is March the 16th, 2020. Quite a tough year for 2020. From the very first month, we have so many heavy things, and it is still going on. The new heavy things comes. <coughs> All right, so finite element is heavy, uh, of course. Uh, that's another heavy thing for you. Mm. So we finish up the match generator for uh, many queues. Uh, Q, Q8, Q4. You do the Q9 by yourself, but probably it's not too difficult to to make a Q9 for you, right? Uh, <coughs> I'm going to do it quickly over here so my code is complete. So, okay, I don't know how much time you spend on this. Let's take a look. Do it together. Hey, where is the file? Where is the file? Where is supposed to be? Uh, e central? No, I just I just get all the code. Oh, sorry. There. Yeah. And uh, do I need to just class 16? It's not there anymore. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Blank presentation. I I, I will not show you the. Since you have done homework, so okay, x y core. How many do we have? We have n n two n x plus one and two n y plus one multiply. All right. I I I just assume that you do homework already, so you're gonna be able to imagine along with me. So two n y plus one times two n x plus one comma two. That's the number of total total nodal point coordinate and then this is comma 9 all right and then uh we're gonna come up with the first thing probably the x y coordinate all right so okay so for i equals to one two two so easy eh, for this one equals to one two two times uh we're gonna do the n y plus one <coughs> and then for j equals to one two um two n x plus one <coughs> I'm sitting in my room I don't want to cough I don't have anything at all and then I come out I want to cough real bad I don't know why yeah, yeah that's because of I'm um, speaking <laughs> so xy coordinate xy core okay um, comma 1 of course and xy core something comma 2 comma 2 is a y coordinate and x coordinate uh, the y coordinate is going to be easy because that's going to be the i minus 1 multiplied by um, um, 0 0.5 times the h y, right? So that's simple. The x coordinate is going to be, of course, easy as well. It's going to be the j minus 1 and times the 0 0.5 multiplied by hx right um, 
huh? So this this is so simple. Well, we need to come back to we need to come back to the uh, this point here. So this point here, I'm gonna um, do this. The M M Y equals to um I minus one multiply by n two n x plus one so I, pe I put the dummy there <coughs> and then I take the dummy plus j okay so that's it done for the x y coordinate then the n uh, what n map construction oh or construction of main map for all right for i equals to one to n y and for j equals to one to n x hmm okay <coughs> the n map all right, we're gonna have a bunch of thing. Just copy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great. <coughs> the last one number nine okay there you go and four and and four okay so uh note number note number Okay, just make maybe three. I don't want that many. And there it is. Yeah, wait a minute. This one is gonna be. Okay, looks good. We have middle node. Okay, we don't need to be uh, very neat right now. We just zoom in and okay. Make sure that this one and this one centered with the line. Then arrange a line top or bottom, bottom first and arrange align distributed horizontally there it is and tip, 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 tip. okay great group it up and this and this and this and this okay so uh now not number okay not difficult at all the thing is that we have like this every row is having the same number of nodes so that's a matter of fact that you just just pick up the 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 first one so ah let's see for the first
we're gonna specify the a and the a is nothing more than <coughs> i minus one multiplied by two times an x plus oh no plus one does not need to be oh just an x just an x right uh i minus one times an x and then plus sorry still need to plus plus j okay done so we get the element number just that and then dummy number one is equal to dummy number one is equal to whoa, 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 whoa. so let's say okay we are on this one so we have the j equals to something j equals to two that means you're gonna have three of this if you have j equals to two if j equals to one you have nothing okay so we're gonna have um, j minus one plus three right j minus one uh, j minus one times three is that accurate no not accurate if we have more of this Let's just figure it out real quick. If we are uh, over here, if we are over here, then this is the row number three. We have one, two, three, four, five. Okay. All right. So it is uh, zero, three, five. Is that the first one? You have zero. Oh, no, no, no. Zero, two, and then four. Okay. Zero, two, four. That means it's the i minus one multiplied by two multiplied by two times an x plus one. 2 times an x plus 1 is a number of node in one row, okay? And then it is multiplied by 2 because if you are looking at this one, uh, you have 1, 2 before. If you look at this one, you have 1, 2, 3, 4 before. And then we add up these many, many nodes in order to start the first node over here. If this one is a start one, then you have 0. So you have zero or you have to add up with two or you have to add up with four okay so you have two over here uh, to multiply by the number of node in each row and then i minus one okay <coughs> so that's the numby, dummy number one i need dummy number two and i need dummy number three okay so dummy number two uh, is going to be add up with one <coughs> okay so that is equal to dummy one and that adds up with two times an x plus one and for dummy number three is just the dummy number two plus uh, 2 times an x plus 1 okay there it is now so one by one uh, if we are looking at this one here <coughs> we have these two nodes come before if you look at this element here and you want to get the node number here you have 2 4 and add up with the first one okay this one so uh, that's it the first node is gonna be equals to dummy plus actually you can do it here it is dummy plus 2 times j plus 1 Look at this one, right? You need this node number. 
So the J is equal to oh the J is equal to two. Two times J minus one and then plus one. Ah, okay. So this is two. J is equal to two. Minus one you get one. Two times one you get two my uh, plus one you get three. If you come to this one, j equals to three, three minus one, you get two, two times two, you get four, four plus one, you get this one. If j is equal to one, then you have nothing. Okay, so j minus one, get to, you get zero, and then plus one, so you get the node number here. Okay, so that's it. Ah, now the a is the dummy number one. Okay, how about the node? The, uh, if we consider this one, the node number two is going to be plus Two, right? Plus two from the dummy. So plus two. D M M Y plus two. And how about this guy? This guy is the number five, right? Plus one. Number five is plus one. D M M Y plus one. Okay. So we get these three nodes already. Then we come to this second one, the second row. The second row is the node number one, two, not the number three, all right? This is number six, number eight, and number nine. Six, eight, nine. Six, eight, nine, dummy two, it will be plus something, dummy two, and dummy two. Okay, so dummy two, we're gonna <coughs> fix it a little bit it's this like this one right because the <coughs> the node number for dummy to so it adds up with these rows already and then it start the operation pretty much like before again so the j minus 1 and then multiply by uh, 2 and then plus 1 that's gonna start the node here so dummy 2 actually this one is number 8 number 8 number 9 and number 6 right 8 9 6 number 8 you don't need to add anything number 9 you need to add up with 1 and number 6 you don't uh, you need to add up with two last one dummy three so three four seven <coughs> dummy three again I got to add it up this way And then uh let's oops almost hit this. Um what this is four, this is seven and this is three. Four seven three. So number four you don't need to add up with anything. Number three you need to add up with two and number seven you need to add up with one. Alright? Just that. it and check it um, so we do the nine maybe what six you don't need that many take too much time to check uh, two three two two oh this is three um well Um, sorry. Um, okay. Two, which means in the direction. Two means the in X, right? Three is in Y. Okay. Ungroup, ungroup, ungroup. 
and then ungroup and un okay can it yeah done <coughs> ah so maybe we we don't really have to uh just put the number in there ah element number 1 this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 right 1 3 15 is it 15 no this is 5 this is uh, this is 10 11 12 13 13 right so is it switching 15 it's not good right 15. is it an x and n y or n y and n x <coughs> N X and N Y. Okay. One three. It was supposed to be thirteen. And eleven, right? And then this is two. Okay, makes sense. Nine. Doesn't make sense here, right? And then this one fourteen. It is like one one block switch, one block. Let me see. Oh, because the dummy dummy there. Okay, I get the point. I get the point. Uh, the dummy includes this one. Okay. So let me do it this way. <coughs> I start with this. Okay. And also the dummy two will be okay. put over here. It's just a lazy way to fix the problem, but it is just quick. It doesn't take much time for you in the class. A no, that well, well, well. Now the dummy, okay, dummy tree is okay. Then, then we come back to dummy one, dummy one. Okay, 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 okay. Let's change the way to do this business. Don't be lazy then. Um so for the number one I cut it like this and I paste it in here. Note number two has to be there and node number uh, five, right? Okay. And then the num number two it's got to take this out. So the number two involves number eight, number nine, and number five. Number eight, number nine. And not number five, number six, okay. And then for the number three, okay, it doesn't really matter to fix. Let's see. One, three, this one is thirteen, eleven and then 2 and then 8 right okay and then 12 makes sense and then 6 and then 7 <coughs> ah, let's check this one then the last one 23 yes 25 yes 
uh, we have five in each row. So how many? One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is thirty, right? Thirty-five, thirty-three, twenty-four. Yes, thirty. Yes, thirty-four. Yes, twenty-eight. Yes, and twenty-nine. Okay, works now. <coughs> So we just plot. <coughs> um, match. Okay. Anyway, it shouldn't shouldn't take that code mm-hmm <laughs> mesh plot hold on element x y element type no uh this one has to be just it uh just just nine uh -huh. four i equals to one to n n y for j equals to one to an x. Yeah, first of all, you need to take the for k equals to one to e type, and then you need to take the temporary coordinate sets of coordinate. So element x y z <coughs> k comma one uh, uh comma this equals to x y core of the n map of uh i minus one right <coughs> n map of which element yes I minus one multiplied by an x. Yes, uh huh, and then plus j, right? Comma k. Close, and this is that, right? In map, you go to the Look up for the element number what number i minus one times n x. <coughs> yes, <coughs> plus j. Okay, and then comma k in order to get the node number. Now you get the node number. Okay, node number one two three four. Okay, this will goes varies, and once you get the node number, you get x y core of that node that includes x and y. Okay. N four and <coughs> eight. You did. You just need eight. You don't need nine. The nine one. You don't need to draw the line. And then E X Y C. Um nine. Comma this. Is equals to e x y c one comma this all right then there it is and we just take the plot <coughs> right oh okay yeah 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 take this one uh, then we don't need to. It is just uh, switching around things a little bit. <coughs> okay, element type. So it is nine comma two. So the switching around over here. Is identical to the Q8, so I just copy it down here. Yeah. 
then they don't need this one okay and then plot it and that's it save it and execute it oh no x is equal eh? okay uh we just if you just want the node number then we're gonna we're gonna plot it out okay looks good how much time 40 minutes yeah for your homework <laughs> uh, let's plot out the node number <coughs> so we use what text the command text right yeah yeah okay <coughs> yeah wait 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 text and then we got to change the string to num or something? No. Um. Okay. Okay. The syntax is text. Coordinate x, coordinate y, and num to string. Great. Um. Um. <coughs> Label node number. So we at least it is convenient for us when we want to put the boundary condition. Then you know which one because later on the mesh is gonna be like huge. So for i equals <coughs> equals to one two what two right two times in x plus one and for j equals to one two two times in y plus one so now now we get the note here <coughs> we got the text we need to get the x y coordinate so the no 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 not yet we need another 4 k is equal to 1 to element type e t y p <coughs> actually this one is universal i think uh, it is usable for the the q4 q8 and q9 right then we just can copy it down here huh? it, oh, in y plus 1 and x plus 1 okay the, the, the number of node not identical okay fine text what do we need x y core x y core of what x y core of the the node number so let's make the a equals to i minus 1 <coughs> multiply by 2 times ny plus 1 and then plus j is that it uh, so we start with the uh -huh, thing like this right now we get the node number i minus 1 you get uh, the the previous row uh, and then plus j okay <coughs> <coughs> so x y core of a comma one right what i did previously it looks stupid so long x y core i minus one have an x plus one plus j okay i minus one oh that's stupid okay yeah this is smarter looks shorter x y core a comma two yeah and then num to string of 
A, right? Because the A is the node number. If you don't want to specify the size of the size of your text, then you just close it down here and then N4 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 that's it save it and execute it Whew. why does it take so long? Ah. It takes too long time. Um, I think we can do the text size. Let's see how to specify the text size. <coughs> text X, Y, and string and Takes properties. All right. Takes properties are uh, background color. Yeah, one one bad thing about Octave MATLAB is much better because it just show the 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 sample syntax. Then. So how to do it? Background color, color spec, shoot, uh, clipping color, color spec definition. Okay, create function. Font angle. Wow, you can make italic. Font name. Font size. Okay. Font unit properties. Okay. So what I just do this font size. Font size. Is that just like this? Not sure about the syntax. Eh. Font unit properties. Oh, it hits to. Oh no, I don't want font unit. Okay, ah, let's see. Error or not? Okay. Font size. Uh, hmm? String. What should be just this? Uh huh. Type the font size in between the what? This and this one, uh, so quad, right? Uh. Oh, we have to type font size in between. Uh huh, and then comma twelve. Just this? Double like this? Without comma? Without what? Without what? Okay. Ah, so you mean this one? Huh? Font size colon. Comma or colon? Com Comma. One size in single quote. Ah, okay. And then what? No, no, no. Okay. 
Now okay. All right. I hate the syntax from one program to different program. I hate this point. Okay. Now it's gonna work. Okay. Then I change the size. Twelve is not good. Twenty. One size, comma twenty. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay. Got to close it first. It is just overlay on top. Uh, okay. Oh, so slow. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. One, three, thirteen, eleven, two, eight. 12, 6, all oh, right, looks good. So for Q8, we can, we can do pretty much the same. But Q8 is sort of, yeah, a little, a little more headed. Where's it? Q8 is here. Uh. <coughs> Shouldn't adopt the code for Q9, or should I? Oh, it. Hmm. Yeah, Q8 is is a headed. Yes. Not necessary. Okay. Um. We just need for i equals to one two size of x y co comma one yeah actually it could be as easy as this one very generalized and then i take this k thing put it here huh? and four that's it right should be in then code because uh, we have this many x y core and one is the number of row so we have this many actually we don't need to do the loop like i loop over this and j loop we not we have x y core already so we want to plot our x y x y core we have so it comes in Oh, where's the A? We don't need the A. We need just to put the I in here. I in here and that's it. That's it. So, if I just change this one to number 8. Ah, okay, something wrong. Uh-huh, yeah, because I put the A in there, right? Uh, it was just change to I, that's it. <coughs> One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seven. Looks good. Huh. <coughs> so let's do Come on. This is I seven. 8 gigabyte or 16 gigabyte RAM something it is slow because of the oops God. oh wow what is that oh it is it is trying it is trying it is coming to here but uh, let me see control in it delete I want to check the Oh, okay. It is progressing. Huh? So slow. 
I just want to execute the task manager. Why does it take so much RAM? Control. Ah, oh, control, alternate, delete, task manager. Let's see how does. Memory is not bad. CPU is not bad. 51, 35. The program, just just Octave, is not the expensive. It is a free use program. So, yeah, if you do it in MATLAB, it, it will be working. It, it, it just shows out now, but... Ah, come on. Okay. A little bit, uh, just yeah, you get more numbers. Okay, oh, it is. It, it's like it is taking forever. Let me check. CPU is not bad. The memory is not fully used. Eh? Available ten gigabytes. It is just using just some. Okay, now just just leave it there, leave it alone. Okay, uh, we have the mesh generator for universal cases already. How about this? Anybody check? Seems like it should be fine. Okay, uh, we come back to main. So we will add some. input should be around here sixty okay This is still heating up the CPU. Probably the graphic. The code that handles the graphic interface of this. Oh. It's still there. Okay. <coughs> so over here, <coughs> we apply. Uh, we have the element type specified. We specify the number of integration points. Okay, all these parameters. Uh, elastic modulus, Poisson ratio. This part here, actually, you can write the uh, input as a uh, function input, uh, the subroutine for the input from the text file. So you might not need to come in here and change it every time. And it is better because you can have like the version of the input and uh, pair it up with the output once the code is working well. You can do more than one material because we can actually make the code more flexible. If you have sort of thing like you want to do the analysis for reinforced concrete uh, members. So for some member like uh, Deep beam, we can investigate into these matters uh, by just discrete, uh, simplifying the deep beams into two dimensional problems. Yeah. The beam columns actually, it could be simplified into 2Ds because the geometry of the member, we can neglect the out of plane behavior and then we can use the plane stress condition to model it. But if the geometry is so challenging like the footing foundation F3 like that or the foundation that is like uh, you have five pies in the foundation things like that you cannot do the two-dimensional uh, analysis then you will need the 3D. Anyway um, I will have the uh, 
boundary condition. So for the boundary conditions, then you once you get yeah, finally, uh, once you get this. Oh yeah, all right. So once you get all of this, you can just pick up the point. When you get the node number, you can identify the degree of freedom. So if you want to restrain this point 491 in the y direction, then you get 491 multiplied by 2. If you want to restrain in the x direction, you get 491 multiplied by 2 minus 1. Right? So this has some advantage, okay? From making, uh, from showing this, this node number because you will you will need to define okay what to do with uh which is node that generally when you when you when you enforce the boundary condition that takes too much ram to keep it here closing is even oh sh it's very time consuming right uh so in your homework that you are ready to do as of now at this point we have the okay the code will be yeah online i i haven't put it online from last time but it shall be on why can I okay likewise uh, discretization in this direction is going to be I think you still remember the problem we compare between the Timoshenko beam and the uh, Euler beam elements. So please use the geometry we had from from that problem. Okay, and then discretize your element uh, like this. So the the ratio between the width and the height, the height is four times, right? Height is this direction. Is it four times? Remember it was four times. You have the the B, the width, but the width is in the out of plane direction. Okay, the width will be scaling the problem we work here it, uh, it's a plane problem plane problem we are considering one unit thickness material so if the b is some number then you need to scale it to your uh, stiffness metric so basically you can scale it by uh, multiplying to the elastic modulus it is one way to do okay so the scaling could be done but the point is that you you need to be consistent with the with the unit first. Ah. All right, and then you have the span, which is given in terms of b as well, right? And then you have the load, which is applied. So the applied load will be in here. We got to write it up, okay? And we need to enforce the boundary condition, which is going to be in here as well, right? So. Uh, to enforce the boundary condition, we're gonna put the degree of freedom B C D F. Okay, degree of freedom to. <coughs> to restrain 
B, C, D, F is equal to the rows. Uh, do we have to? Yeah, yeah, just, 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 just this. The degree of freedom that you want. I execute this again with the smaller one. In X, we have, uh, let's say, 16, and in Y, we have only 4. I do the manual numbering might be faster. Sir, yeah. Uh, how to give boundary condition for the plane frame problem? How to give boundary condition. Boundary conditions for to the, the plane strain problem. For example, if you have like an embankment like this and the base of the embankment shouldn't move, uh, that is also Right, that's a boundary condition. Mm. You don't need to give the boundary condition along the Z direction because you don't expect any any movement along the Z as it is a plane strain problem. But in X in Y, you could have the free uh, movement or you can have the restrained movement. <coughs> So, just randomly give the number, maybe, uh, almost, 816422, two. 8, oh, that's going to need 3, 16, and X is 16, and y is 4 to 2 okay all right now we have the geometry which is identical to this this shape okay so we need to restrain this point and 130 101 we will have 201 and 202 degree of freedom yeah. So, 201, 202, what else? If we want to restrain just the Y direction and allow the free movement along the X, so this one here is going to be the 266. Well, the homework will be quite useful for you because you're going to see when the problem might persist, might come up when we use the finite element. At least this one, you will... S well, finite element is accurate. In I mean, the point is that when you use it, you might not use it and understand it uh, precisely. In, in the reality, um, sometimes you apply the boundary condition here. Not sometimes, in, in, in the reality, you apply the boundary condition at the bottom of the beam right, to, ca uh, to carry the gravity load. But in structural analysis and in the light element, it's actually like you apply in the centroid, okay, at the neutral axis, at the center of the, at the axis of the member. And uh, when you apply uh, the boundary con condition in the lie element, you don't see any stress, uh, the singularities or the peak or the concentration of stress because it's just a lie element and it's just one degree of freedom there. But when you do it in finite element, you have the reactions apply at this point and at this point we are going to see the concentration of the stress along at just at these two points okay 
So reality, you might put the pin. The pin is actually not touching just one finite point. It touch over like some 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 width, some given distance. It is not zero, okay. But to do it in FEM, it might look like zero. So in order to improve the behavior, you might need uh, some sort of discretization around this area. So you get like the finer mesh and then you you make all those meshes move together or lock together with the boundary conditions to, to just improve the result, to reduce the effects from the sort of like peak stress or the uh, irregular stress distribution. <laughs> Okay, so uh, boundary condition is over there. I have the <coughs> this part is a a very sloppy boundary condition. Uh, Enforcing boundary conditions. Uh, we use the penalty method, and I didn't make it uh, the automatic code. Okay, we just pick one by one point for that given problem to just make it run. So let's do it. Um, for i equals to one to size of B C something what B C D F comma one okay if any uh, if B C D F is zero okay but that's not possible because we will need boundary condition anyway ah K C comma something is equals to blank K sys comma is equal to blank N four. Uh, <coughs> A is equals to I minus one. Now I'm going to use the row and column elimination. It just make your stiffness matrix smaller. But in the situation when you need to apply displacement, then you just use the Lagrange multiplier. So just when necessary, then we add up, we increase the size of the stiffness matrix. But if not necessary, then uh, we we do it this way. Uh, just decrease, just remove the row and column. It makes the computational times uh, a little smaller. So uh, the number, the boundary condition will be the. First of all, I think we need to sort up, okay? Or if we don't want to sort it up, then we need to say something over here that the DOF must be sorted up. Here, because I will not sort. Or to 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 make it foolproof, if someone came in and just used the program uh, without reading anything, uh, sort. You will understand why I need to sort it. Uh, sort. So I uh, get the S and I sort. Sort XOS. What is that? One, two, three, one, two, three, and two. One, two, two, three, three, one. Uh huh. Return a copy of X with the element arranged in increasing order for matrices. Sort orders in element within column. Okay. So I just do uh, 
start up let's make a equals to three five two seven sort a b b comma c equal to sort a nah. so i need the three five two seven three one two four Oh, this is the rank, right? No. Three, one, two, four, two, three, five, seven. Not the rank. Anyway, we're gonna need just the the first one, just the B. Yeah. Okay, then I sort it just to make sure that it is foolproof. The B, C, D, F is an A, okay, is equal to sort B, C, D, F. Hopefully, I'll try first, try first. Can I do it this way? Okay, yeah. So, original A was this, and then the new A turns out to be two, three, five, seven in the sort uh, one. Okay. <coughs> okay. So it works now. Uh, size of B C D F comma one. Okay. And then assign the A equal to I minus one. Okay. Uh huh. So we need to identify the row number and column number to be Q of, right? So the row number and column number came from, uh, first of all, row number B, C, <coughs> B, C, D, F. No. Just, just, no, no, no. Takes too much space. B is equal to B, C, D, F. <coughs> I comma one minus A. Oi. So we have B and B and this and this. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at this. The B C D F I comma one you get the number and then you need to minus A because <coughs> for the first time uh I illustrate this to you. Okay, so here's your matrix, <coughs> and then you want to remove this row. <coughs> so if it is three, then it's gonna be three in the orthogonal direction. Okay, but once this is done. The matrix turns out to be 5 by 5. You actually want to do it here for another time. Maybe this one. <coughs> you want to do the, the, the red row and column operation which is going to come after the blue row and blue column. 
The point is that once you're done with the blue rows and blue columns, the matrix size turns out to be 5 by 5. And this column used to be the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It used to be the fifth column. But once the blue is gone, once the blue is gone, the fifth turns out to be the fourth. Is that right? Yeah. So the second time in the next, 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 your index of the row and column you wish to eliminate have changed by the previous operation. So I need to put that A, which is the, well actually you don't need the A, so it is just the minus I plus one. <coughs> if, you, if you want to save another line. Minus I plus one. What is that? So for the red, I is equal to two. Minus 1, you get 1. Okay? So the index you have, which was 5, will be minus 1. Turns out to be the number 4. If you have to eliminate more than just that, let's say here, the green. rows and columns. This is number 6. <coughs> so, when it comes to the number 6, after the operations in blue and in red, number 6 turns out to be number 4. You want to eliminate rows and column number 4. So number, uh, the operation in green color is the third one, right? So the I value turns out to be 3. 3 minus 1, you get 2. Okay, and then you get the node and uh, the, the row and column number 6 minus 2. You get number 4. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4. So operation will be carried out at the right one. If you look for number 6, it's no longer in here, in this matrix. Or if it is available, then it is the wrong. It's the wrong point, the wrong degree of freedom that you want to enforce. Okay, so this is necessary. <coughs> so you get the number, but you need to have the correction I minus 1 apply. Without this, you enforce the wrong one. Ah, okay, then boundary condition is now enforced. What else? We need to apply <coughs> force. Force to be applied in here applying or well if you want to call force or if you want to call pressure that is also possible so we can use the shape function to come up with the pressure applications on the on the surface of the element so let's see if we apply the pressure like this it will look just like the homework because we have the uniformly distributed load apply on top over here so Actually, you have pressure applied on one surface, which is the top surface of the element at the top.
okay uh, if we have that then <coughs> we can use the shape function along with uh, well look at the force vector you have the integration of the force uh, integration of the F which is the pressure multiplied by the shape function but that's going to be the shape function for the displacement in the y direction okay in order to in order in order to get the work done by this pressure actually well we can switch to i think we will switch to ipad in order to understand this <coughs> Okay, so force or pressure okay, could be applied. We leave it here first. If you just want to make it like uh, just to get the homework done, then you just put the force vector here. Okay? F this and then you look up for the node number and then look for the degree of freedom in the y uh, like this or oh, this is slow right mm. so you will look for the node number over there at the top surface and then the node for that node number you look for the y which is the node number multiplied by 2 that's the location where you apply the the force okay but the force will apply how how much the distribution to each point should be uh, you just go back to the bar problem in the bar problem we apply the load along the axis of the bar and then uh, for two nodes element you have if you have the uniformly distributed load you have half and half okay one node half and another and uh, when you have quadratic element you have what one six and uh, one six two third and one six right one six of the f times L two third times F L. You 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 go back. That's a very old homework. When you when you apply the uniform uniform load, eh? one six two third one six. That is going to be the same for this one here. So if you have the linear interpolation, If you have linear interpolation, you're gonna have half and half. Uh, but when you have quadratic, then you get the intensity multiplied by the size here, and then this one get one six, this one get two third, this one get one six, and the nearby element it is one six two third one six. So what you what you're gonna see is going to be one you, once you add it up, one third. Two third, one third, two third, one third, two third, and so on, so forth. So this is how you apply the load on this. Ah. <coughs> Later on, you have the displacement equals to zeros. Okay, you apply it and deform shapes. Okay. So how to zoom out.
Do I need to do anything to show you? Ah, we just do something easy here, okay? We we don't need to go for fancy things. Where is the middle? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and eight. So this is in the middle. No, two one six, two one seven, two one eight. Okay, let me just apply forces into these three here. F six is apply. Okay, it's okay. initialized already. So F six number number two one six is four thirty two. Four thirty four, four thirty six. Okay, I apply the point force for this case minus ten point zero. Uh, to simulate point force, this might be minus forty point zero and minus 10.0 so we might not we re this might be uh, close to the application of single point force of 60 in magnitude but I just distributed out a little bit in order to just simulate that it looks like the direct delta function so I don't concentrate to to have too much singularity, I distribute it out a little bit. Okay, and then I, I find the displacement solution. I look up for the inverse, blah, blah, blah. Okay. The mesh over here. I'm not sure if it's going to work. Let's try first. Okay, we might see the bug later. This is not made for this. This was made for Q4 initially, so I'm not sure the thing. Oh, huh? What 32? Lie 32. Oh, number of node, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh no 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 okay then then let's 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 do it here. N E L E should be size of N map comma one. Number of N map number of row of N map is equal to number of elements and uh, number of node is the size of x y co comma one okay so it it should be okay here rigidity matrix will not change the weight the gauss cases is two times number of node okay this would work f sys is all is going to work k element yes two times this Element X Y Z is E type, okay, and then I migrate the element from N map I J J runs, okay, it's going to work, no problem. Number of integration point, we find uh, C eta. This is uh, generalized, okay. Plug in, this is going to work as well. Ah, probably. So the part that might not uh, work, just check it. Uh, yeah, one thing we we reduce the row and column, so the displacement here that comes out should be minus size of the. <coughs> right.
right? Because it has been reduced. Ah. And then this displacement, actually we, we might not need to pre-assign it. It should work without this. Uh, displacement equals to inverse of k cis times f cis. So the f cis has to be in here together with k cis, right? f cis, uh, the b. Because the k is reduced, the dimension of the k must match with the f. So the f must be reduced together with the k. So the f will be reduced in the row. f has just one column. Yeah. So we reduce the, the row that is associated with the degree of freedom in f6. Then over here we should bring it up because otherwise it will be affected. Okay. F is there, F is so this number might be moving when you conduct these eliminations and find the displacements. Uh-huh. And then draw the mesh exaggeration factor element X, Y, C, okay, element okay, whatever. Uh, this should be subjected to the condition. Let me. If. <coughs> element type is equals to 4. And then I copy the match. Uh, okay, mesh plotting for the Q4 here. Okay, we we have the Q4 over here already, right? Uh huh. So this is good for Q4. else if e type is equal to 8 else which is 9 oh, I keep it else if to make sure that mm. and if Format indent. Okay, number eight. Ah, go get number eight. Number eight. Match plotting. Axis equal. So axis equal is applied before already, and then for i equal to one text. Okay, I don't need that. Copy this thing and paste it there okay um, <coughs> we need to do this hold on not need anymore element x y okay this is necessary this is also necessary. Ah, the point is that right now you need to add the row back. Insert the row. Your displacement vector is now shrinked because of the row and column elimination. Okay. Then, 
now we want to insert the row back in there and the row that you insert in is going to be zero because that's the row and row of the boundary condition displacement right you need to insert the zero back otherwise it will be all messed up because the displacement here we mean the <coughs> So insert <coughs> QR insert oh. C H O L Wow What is it? Key factorize or no? QR insert QR factorization original factor matrix. There's no insert. Anybody remember the routine to it? It's no. Insert row math lab. How can I insert row into math lab without deleting its value? Uh -huh. How can I insert row in the middle of the metric vector here? Yeah. Okay, my question is also about this subject, but appears a bit more complicated. Uh, wherever, just just tell me. <coughs> okay. <coughs> No ready to use code. It has to be some some line. I, I just need a quick one. Okay, yeah. A equal to A and this is that is all on the way all the way to the back. Okay. <coughs> Uh huh. I think I know it. So let's say a okay two three five seven. So if I if I say a is equals to a itself. Uh, one, two, um, it's not in here, okay. just give it a try like this. 
one two three comma zero comma four you cannot subscribe must be either integer let me put just subscript must be either integer uh, cannot right okay let's make it this way Uh huh. Okay. Hey, uh, one, two, three, and four. Okay, and then insert something in there. Or the B is equal to A. One, two, three. like this comma <coughs> comma a four my work horizontal mismatch Three by one, uh, we is one by one. Ah, oh, I know. Shoot it. Yes, got it. Okay. Ha. Huh. And then I forget in a few days and then I will got to do it again I I I don't want to keep things in the brain seriously so all right all right right for I equals to one two size of BCDF comma one we insert back <coughs> So uh, this well, what I did there, I forgot already. <laughs> okay, uh, we can just do it this way. This placement is equals to this placement itself. When we insert, we should insert it. Okay, from the top down. So one. What 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 is it? We have the bracket right, and then displacement and um zero right, and displacement and close it like this, okay, so this one is from one to something comma this, and then this is the same comma this. One two two what? Two the B A is equal to B C D F I comma one right. So one two A. Uh huh. And then make it uh, drop the zero in and then this is from from A onward from A to to what <sighs> gotta make, make the B B is equal to Two times N N D E minus. First of all, you have 
size B C D F comma one and then right and then add up with I minus one. So it's gonna be from A to B. The thing is that this is from the topmost to the first point of problem to the first degree of freedom you enforce the boundary condition all right uh, for uh, so you add the zero in and then you connect the displacement vector with the the, the tails end which is here I know it is sort of you need to insert this guy you need to insert this guy in so this guy is zero basically this is from one to the number So this is three. Oh, then you cannot go one to three. Then it has to be one to two. So it ha has to be a minus one. And this is from a minus one to b. <coughs> First of all, you don't have this because after the after you solve you don't have the roles of the boundary condition enforcement okay so it does not show up so the row number three is something else but not your boundary condition degree of freedom now you want to add the row number three in place the the real degree of freedom that you just cut off you eliminate it out so you go you want to make the new mat uh, the new vector that has the yellow thing adds up so the first part will be here copy here I'll put the text can it still okay yeah it works okay so 1 to a minus 1 a is the number 3 okay a is the number 3 so 1 to a minus 1 is the 1 and 2 just the 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 entries above number 3 and then you insert the number 3 in place and then you need to connect these tails so these tails is from oh, it was supposed to be just a right not minus 1 uh, because this is the number 3 4 5 has to be brought in place here so A to B. Oh. Eh. Ah, okay. A to B. So three to B. What is the B? Actually, B. Initially, it is like two times N N D E. But you eliminate fields already. A few, a few degree of freedoms already. So, uh, it's not. 2 times n n d e it is 2 times n n d e minus minus the number of degree of freedom you removed previously okay which is defined by the b but i don't just go with the the b is not one number because once you add in the next round for example if if total number is 100 and then you in apply boundary conditions to 3 DOF so you have 97 that when you add the first one back in second round you don't have 97 you have 98 okay so the B is changed in the second round and then once you come to the third round it is 99 so this is what I embedded in here 
So two n n d e, it is minus the size, which is the number of boundary condition you enforce. But then I add it up with i minus one. So for the first round, i minus one is zero. The second round, i minus one turns out to be one, and on and on and on. Okay. So I accommodate the the changing of the size. So the b is there, a is there, all right? N four. Huh? Which one? This one. A is equal to b c d y. Huh? Plus i minus one. Oh no, no. Why? Do you know? We sort it up already. So when we add in here, ah, uh, let's see. This is intentionally no. I. I I do it this way intentionally. Um. Shape format. Okay, the red one. So these two guys are not here yet. Okay. So for this problem, this is number three, eh? and this is number one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So once you solve. Right when you do the inversion of the matrix and and solve, you get the solution one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have just seven. So you add the first one in. Insert the first one in. A. Was supposed to be number three, right? Okay. So. It is correct already. One to two, and then you add it in number three, and then from the three onwards to the all the way to the back. Okay. How about the second one? Now, the second one will be coming at coming to the right to its own place because this one has already already been fixed. So you don't need to add up with the i minus one over here anymore. Because once we are done, we come to this one. So this one is at the number six. Then the a is now five, right? <laughs> no, not not a five. A is six, but this is like six minus one. So it's come to the fifth one, and then we add this to the six, and then the six, seven, eight, just. Came in at the tail, so the A is already correct. Ah, what else? So if this is working now, no problem over here. About how about here? We need to um, okay. Let's see if this is working for our element like it. E x y j k equals to this, which is working for all kinds. Exaggeration multiplied by displacement. That works okay, and then. Okay, just this part here that that will not work. Just this part here that e x y c has to be switching around before it was plot. Okay, just that. Then I can copy e x y c zeros. Okay. 
and then I then uh huh. One to N E L E fine element type okay and for I have this one and it is not necessary for here I copy the T thing put it into here okay so I migrate one, two, three, four, five from there to the ninth, and then I can plot with the red. Looks good. <coughs> Supposed to be usable. Okay. Initialize this, initialize this, and then in here we do it element by element. And what we have from here, we we add up the original coordinates <coughs> with the exaggerated displacement in x, in y, and then we get the node nodal point coordinate for all 1 to 8 and we just switch around because we, we, we need to plot uh, switch around and then we plot in red and likewise for the 9 but the 9 is going to be a little bit different E X Y C. We just need to the add enough. <coughs> Let's just spell it out explicitly. Just say eight and nine. We don't need the flexibility in here. Okay, and then we take to the add node enough don't go beyond that and this is up to the ninth node all right and plot that's it okay save it and see the disaster so just main right oh it takes so much time at the plotting the node at the beginning actually I should queue out this part queue mesh uh, let me see Okay, okay, almost, almost, almost. It's gonna run the the highlight soon. Just <sighs> disable the the node plotting the number, the text plotting. Don't know why it takes so much time. Uh, and then I'm waiting for the analysis result so the matrix is big probably control then it delete task manager maybe the matrix is big as the <coughs> is it done yet oh column 7 105 um what is it so okay the result comes out oh. error horizontal dimensions mismatched 200 by 1 versus 1 by 1 
at 105 okay that's the point where we okay first of all let's stop this thing the the, the label label node number if label is equals to one and if so it shall stop is it label here? yes oh if LBL equals to 1 and if so this is just and num2 string okay here if LBL equals to 1 and if Again and then LBL I'll put here LBL equals to zero and come back to the main and one oh five okay displacement oh so problem uh, what is that displacement does not match horizontal dimension mismatch 200 by 1 versus 1 by 1 this is 200 by 1 1 by 1 it used to match it used to work in another one before right huh Ah, this okay. Huh, try again. Okay, don't need to plot this. Oh, come on. Okay, yeah, that's fun. Huh? Plot. Okay, okay, okay. What? In the main function, the plot. 143. Oh, oh it was supposed to be T. Yeah. Eagle eyes. <laughs> it might be just one thing. There might be more. Ah, but we'll see at least <coughs> yeah okay ah, first good thing eh? always have the bug at the end of the class after that bug I came back and tried to find out what goes wrong so I execute the code for Q4 uh, I'm going to show you and it works just fine so I'm going to execute the code for Q9 which is already there I just uh, make uh, duplicate the main function into like a main 4, main 8, main 9 so I just do not need to uh, make change to the input every time I'm gonna bring you to the input file uh, while we are waiting for the result so the main nine if you try actually all these files are available on the Google Drive which is the 
link that is uh, shown in the description so the element type is 9 using 3 integration points uh, elastic modulus and Poisson ratio are identical to the other two main 4 and main 8 uh, same geometry so same numbers of discretization in X and Y sizing are the same the boundary conditions and the node, uh, the degree of freedom for the boundary condition enforcement are different. So for the well, you can just execute the uh, the the rec mesh and then see uh, the node number uh, at which we enforce the boundary condition, which is the support. So at these three nodes, uh, this is the difference between the main 4, main 8, and main 9, right? But the other details are pretty much the same. And moreover, uh, the location where apply forces are different. So main 8, main 9, well, that's uh, due to the fact that the uh, degree of freedom has changed, right? So uh, that that's all the the modifications, but the other things are pretty much the same. So there is no no other uh, how to say the difference, all right? And uh, okay, this is for Q9. So Q9 just works properly. There's nothing wrong. So we. Uh, Executing the Q8, uh, the main 8. All right. So while waiting, then we come back and see what what went wrong. So the only thing that went wrong, okay, it's not about the input. It is just about just one single line, and you can see this this line here that I comment out. So I came back and looked. Uh, checked into the derivative of shape functions. Everything is okay, but the derivative of shape function with respect to c, uh, with respect to eta, so it is a dn dz424 is a uh, phi4 shape function number 4 and 2 is a derivative with respect to eta. And this wouldn't supposed to have the minus sign over here. Just this minus sign that messed the whole thing up. All right, so I made a correction down here in the line below without the negative sign, and the other things are still the same. Other places are okay for a Q9 is all okay. So uh, here we go. Yeah, we get the result now so this is the result for q8 it looks makes sense to me right now so we apply a force at the the middle node uh, pretty much like a point force and then the beam deformed just the way it was supposed to be so we will later on check the uh, justify this code further if uh, the deflection of the beam we will try the case where the beam is uh, just a slender Euler beam and see how it match and we're gonna do a bunch more after this but at least at this point now it it works in the way in the in the way that it would supposed to do let me wrap up this class presentation just at this point here